visual components. Will Optimus be a gopher? In a word, no. However, Optimus could have a vital role supporting material flow within the factory. For those not familiar with the term gopher, it means the entry-level worker sent to fetch things for others, or go for this and go for that. If you require gophers to randomly retrieve items to keep things operating, you either have a very unorganized factory or you run a hospital. A modern factory is the epitome of logistics and supply chain encapsulated in a small footprint. The timely movement of parts and material throughout the factory is critical to its efficient operation. If even a small part is delayed or missing, think chips, it can have serious knock-on effects to the rest of the manufacturing processes and halt production. Hence, engineers spend countless hours planning and simulating the material flow through the factory, as this is the lifeblood of the plant. How material flows from one location to another differs depending on the size, weight, and number of parts needed. Hence, the ideal solution will differ from case to case. An optimist could fill in such a niche. The idea that optimists would carry boxes around the factory is misguided. There already exist robotic solutions for just that, and they are called mobile industrial robots. They are cheap, plentiful, and optimized specifically for the task. However, Optimus can assist mobile robots, just not replace them. Let's look at examples used to move material in a factory. The most tried and true method is the conveyor. They're ubiquitous within factories and are the go-to solution for consistent high-speed flow of material. They're like railroads, efficient, reasonably priced, and easy to install. However, they are not always the ideal solution. Like railroads, they have space claim, require crossings, and are not easily rerouted if destinations change location. In recent years, conveyors have seen competition from mobile robots, especially in low volume applications that require flexibility. Mobile robots can use existing infrastructure and do not require reconfiguration if destinations change. It's like choosing buses over light rail for city transit. One of the challenges of mobile robots is how to get material on and off. While these examples show only one product, it is possible to load a pattern of parts to bring to different locations, making trips more efficient. Let's explore the various options for loading and unloading material onto a mobile robot. But first, let's take a, another look at the conveyor, as we see in this particular simulation. In this case, the competition between the mobile robots and the conveyor seems to be fairly even. We're able to keep up with the flow of material because in this case, we are not having to feed a lot of product down the conveyor at the same time. However, if the volume of product increases significantly, there is no way the mobile robots could keep up and the conveyor could be the best solution. Of course, we could be adding additional robots, uh, mobile robots into the scene that would make uh, the ability to carry more products a bit more competitive with a conveyor system. However, the real challenge, of course, is how do we get things on a mobile robot and off? And if we look closely at the first example here, the product is being rolled on and off the con uh, on and off the mobile robot as if there was a conveyor on the mobile robot itself that will allow it to be sliding on and sliding off. But that may not always be the case. There may be situations where it's not that easy to just go ahead and have it roll on and off. And so you'd want to be able to pick and place it somehow. That could actually entail putting a robot itself onto the mobile robot. This is a robot arm to be able to do the picking and placing of products on and off the mobile robot as it moves from the pickup to drop off locations. But there's a lot of downsides to this. One is the mobile robot spends most of its time actually, no, or sorry, the robotic arm spends most of its time being a passenger on the mobile robot. That's a very inefficient usage of that particular piece of capital. So it would be better maybe to make it more fixed. The other problem, of course, is the mobile robot has to supply the power for the robotic arm, which is on top of it. So that will drain the batteries of it a little bit quicker. So the other possibility is just go ahead and make the robot arm fixed. So it'll be able to pick up the product, and drop it on the mobile robot as it comes by and continue to do that. And you would need one on both sides. Now, of course, the other disadvantage of 
putting a, an arm directly onto mobile robot, if we have 10 robots, mobile robots that are needed to do the ferrying back and forth, we would need 10 arms. So this is a slightly better solution to go ahead and do that. Now, it is possible that Optimus would be able to replace these robotic arms and do the same task. But if you look at it, it's really not the ideal configuration because Optimus has four arms when we can see the job can actually be done with one arm. However, this one arm does need a special gripper to be able to pick up the product. And those grippers sometimes have to be specifically designed for whatever the product is that needs to be picked up. In this case, we're using a vacuum gripper, but a vacuum gripper doesn't suit all applications. Sometimes you'll actually need a tactile gripper. So the idea of a universal gripper is very difficult to design, and Optimus in some ways might be able to do it. However, it, as we can see, we're not really using the mobility of Optimus the way we would like to. So what's the point of having the legs if you don't really need it to do an application like this? Hence, a stationary robot would be able to work. But if you actually go out in the factory, in a lot of cases, you may see setups like this, and as you walk through, you'll notice that robot arm is sitting there doing nothing. You kind of wonder what's going on. Well, it just happens to be during a part of the production process where maybe no product is coming in here. So this arm gets sporadic usage. And the result is it's maybe only being used 40% of the time or 50% of the time. And that is something that you would not like. You would prefer to be able to allocate that somewhere else where it's needed at the time. But because it's literally bolted to the floor, you can't do it. Optimus does give you that flexibility that it can go where you need. So basically it becomes an automation on demand kind of robot that it goes where it's needed at the particular time. You could also have another situation where the pickup point here is not going to be exactly right in front of the conveyor. And then if we say that there's something that would prevent the mobile robot from getting so close to the conveyor, and we can go ahead and change something like that. I'm going to modify the location of this pickup point by about a meter further out. So now the mobile robot is not going to be right next to the conveyor as it comes in. In this case, yeah, Optimus is going to need its legs to be able to move out and back to be able to load the product onto here. So here's a case where you do need the mobility because the space is a little bit different. Now, of course, we could have Optimus be doing the entire long haul, but uh, it's not really ideal for that. Uh, short haul kind of applications are all right, but once you start to have to go long distance, it's really not ideal for Optimus because you're not using its full capabilities most of the time. So most of the time you're just walking in those two arms aren't really being used for anything. And it'd be nice to be able to find an application where you're generally using both the arms and legs all the time. That is an Optimus type of application. Okay, so hopefully this gives you an idea of what could again be some of the low hanging fruit type of applications that you might see in the factory. It is common that you will see uh, humans doing the picking and placing of products onto the backs of these mobile robots. Uh, or you may do it robotically, you'll put in some sort of automation. However, the cost of the automation here is not necessarily cheap. So if you decide to put an arm in there, you want to make sure you get some sort of payback and get the payback pretty quick. And again, if it's not being used almost 100% of the time, it may not make sense to automate it. In which case, you want the flexibility of a human operator to go in there to maybe do the loading and unloading. In which case, that becomes one of those niche applications that perhaps Optimus can do because it can be used when it's needed and in the end, the cost of Optimus may actually be very competitive to these kind of arms, these commercial arms that are already available, because these arms are also in the tens of thousands of dollars, especially by the time you complete the engineering and get everything installed and up and running. So that uh, concludes this particular uh, episode and, expo and exploration of what the possibilities are for Optimus on the factory floor. And as we get more ideas, we will show more videos. Visual components.